right now on Cairo 7 News. Tonight, loved ones of Jessica Valdez are remembering and celebrating her life after she was killed this week in a suspected DUI crash involving a forklift. Good evening, everyone. I'm Monique Minglavin. And I'm Gary Horker. Kyra 7's Bridget Chavez is live where that vigil has happened. And Bridget, this is a woman who is clearly loved by so many people. Gary and Monique, she really was loved by so many. There are still quite a few people here gathering, talking, honoring, and remembering Jessica. They say that she would have been 28 years old today, and she was really looking forward to celebrating this birthday. They have balloons here for her to celebrate her life. Jessica was killed Tuesday after a forklift collided with this gray SUV. Seattle police say the driver of that forklift was trying to cross Aurora at 96th when that crash happened. Jessica was in the front passenger seat of the gray SUV and her family tells us that that was her car. She and two others were taken to Harborview Medical Center for treatment, but Jessica died at the hospital. She leaves behind three young children, all of them under the age of 10. The driver of the forklift was arrested for DUI. Jessica's family says she was a great mom, had a bubbly personality, and always had a big smile on her face. We spoke with the father of her three children, and he says he's devastated. In all reality, just uh, that she was a great person, had a wonderful personality. She was beautiful. She, you know, had a lot going for herself. I know my kids are devastated right now. She was happy all the time, you know, and it's, it's now how we remember her. And when I spoke with the family earlier this week and even folks out here today, they say they want justice for Jessica, a few of them even wearing shirts with her picture on it, saying justice for Jessica. And we'll have that part of the story coming up for you tonight at 11. Reporting live in Seattle, Bridget Chavez, Cairo 7 News. All right, we're going to turn to the weekend now and Chief Meteorologist Morgan Palmer's here. We've got a nice weekend on tap before some big changes. We're going to have to brace ourselves next <laughs> week, right, Morgan? Uh, it's going to feel like winter once again. It is February after all. Looking outside Bellingham right now, it's a, a nice night. It's a quiet night and it'll be a mainly quiet weekend. We're kind of taking the, the wide view here on the Pinpoint Future Track and then we'll zoom in a bit. All of the rain stays to the northwest of the area until we get into Sunday. Now, early in the day Sunday, a few showers around the Olympic Peninsula, but let's go forward into Sunday evening. We'll have a bit more light rain across the area and then things do get a little more interesting late on Monday and into Tuesday. So we're already way past the weekend here. We could have some lower snow levels and possibly even some lowland snowflakes before it starts to dry out. We will fine tune that as we get closer, but if you happen to see a snowflake on an icon on some app somewhere, that's why. Saturday, lowlands are looking nice, some sunshine, great for skiing in the mountains. On Sunday, a drier day, rain chances do increase though, so I have a one on the pinpoint storm tracker scale. Rain at times and turning colder late on Monday. As far as the ski report, looking at the resorts, a new inch of snow at Snoqualmie Pass, Crystal Mountain, 98 inches. It's looking nice into the weekend. I'm looking at the weekend forecast hour by or when the rain arrives where you live coming up. Thanks, Morgan. I'm Didi Sun at the live desk. An incident in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood prompting police to release this body camera video tonight. It captures the moments officers respond earlier this month after several people call 911 reporting hearing gunshots. And take a listen to the dispatch call. Caller heard one shot and screaming a minute ago. Now there's a large group gathered. Callers saying they heard two shots and one male yelling, everybody is going to die. Now nobody was shot, but it sends several Seattle police officers responding to the 12th and Mercer area. They see someone in a yellow hoodie and dark jacket as described by dispatch and get out their long guns, shouting instructions to the alleged suspect. But someone interrupts saying that the man in the yellow hoodie has no gun and is his brother. Get out of place. Come with your hands up. You and the yellow hoodie. Keep your hands where you can see them. Slowly walk this way. We never fight any shots any guns at my brother. You can hear the stress and fear in his voice there. Officers tried to explain the situation, and shortly after, they give the order to disengage and left that scene. SPD says the officer's response was, uh, the video was recorded by community members as well, and that's currently being shared on social media. They said that is why they're releasing this body camera video for full transparency. Now, nobody was hurt in any of this. At the live desk, I'm Dee Dee Sun. 
Well, now to an update on that deadly weekend hit and run that killed an 80-year-old grandmother in Madison Valley. Seattle police say they've tracked down the van that struck and killed Barry Hill. But unfortunately, that driver is still out in the wind and police are still looking for Yeah, hers. Cairo 7's Lauren Donovan spoke to Barry's family. They are distraught over losing her and determined to get justice. All the images in my mind are of her smiling and laughing and her big infectious laughter. When there was a dark circumstance, a dark situation, she would always find the irony or humor in it. Aaron Wood spent the last five days in a fog. Barry Hill, his beloved aunt, was on her way to a family gathering Sunday evening when she was struck and killed by a van in this Madison Valley intersection. This didn't have to happen. And the person who drove off, their act of driving off made it much worse. The way Aaron puts it, the 80-year-old was vivacious. Well, this is my favorite. Barry had just beat cancer, and there was so much life yet to live. We understand accidents happen, and I don't think we're a vengeful group of people. We really just want justice. Surveillance footage captured in the garage of a Safeway just hours before the collision shows the van authorities believe is responsible. This is the Seattle Police Department. Over in Ballard, there was a breakthrough in the case. Police tracked down what appears to be the same van, but the driver they're searching for was nowhere to be found. So now it's a, a matter of uh, identifying the, the true driver of that van. Jim Fuda with Crime Stoppers wants to know, was the van stolen and were there multiple drivers? Questions still to be answered. Meantime, anyone with information can get a $1,000 reward by providing that to Crime Stoppers. We've been going out, uh, handing out flyers and going door to door. I don't think we're going to rest until this person's identified and caught. Reporting in Seattle, Lauren Donovan, Cairo, 7 News. Well, going in depth now, Aaron also told Lauren before all this happened, he had heard about the startling increase in deadly traffic accidents. He says losing his aunt in this hit and run illustrates what a serious problem this really is. According to the Washington Traffic Safety Commission, in 2022, 745 people have been killed in traffic accidents. We haven't seen a number that high since 1990. Anna... Anna Zivarts with Disability Rights Washington says there is an elevated danger for folks walking and rolling in our state. As you follow the news, it seems like day in and day out um, we hear of, of new crashes, um, and it's it's pretty scary. I think you know nationally we had a, a, an increase as well, and some of the national trends have started to get a little better, but Washington State hasn't. Um, and so we really need to take this seriously. Zyvart suggests one way to improve safety for those crossing the street is to limit where you can turn right on red. Right now at the State House in Olympia, lawmakers are debating a bill that would do just that. Well, new numbers show more than 1.2 million gallons of trash were collected in downtown Seattle just last year. And we're not talking about garbage pickups here. We're talking about traffic and waste left on sidewalks and alleys and along curb lines. Cairo 7's Kevin Coe has more details from downtown. Every day last year, more than 3,000 gallons of trash were picked off of sidewalks and streets across six downtown Seattle neighborhoods. That doesn't include the biohazard materials cleaned up by downtown ambassadors. It's a lot of work, as we saw firsthand today. But now there's more people and more tools to get it done. Garbage truck tools. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> yeah, a lot. As a Clean Street ambassador, it's Vincent's job to find trash. Vincent was one of several clean team ambassadors who picked up more than 1.2 million gallons of trash last year. These numbers are for the Metropolitan Improvement District, or MID, which is managed by the Downtown Seattle Association. The MID includes 285 blocks across downtown Seattle, including this area of Third and Pike. Vincent was joined by fellow ambassador Kevin picking up trash along sidewalks while clean team ambassador Chris cleared graffiti. They form bonds with local private security workers who help move large crowds while cleanups are done. This year, they'll have more help. MID hired 27 clean team ambassadors in previous months while adding 12 new trikes. Vincent's trike is where he keeps his tools, including pressure washers. It also helps get more work done. 
being on a trike gets uh, our ambassadors to messes and cleanups twice as fast and sometimes faster. Cleaning up downtown has become a focus point for Seattle Mayor Bruce Harrell. Eight months ago, Harold joined thousands of volunteers, including Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll, for the first ever One Seattle Day of Service. Mayor Harold believes cleaning up the city will do more than improving appearance. We want a safe city. We want a clean city. We want a vibrant city. We want all boats to rise. And so it's going to take energy and creativity and a commitment. We are cautiously optimistic, and, and downtown is coming back, and I think there's momentum. Reporting in Seattle, Kevin Coe, Cairo 7 News. Well, people around Seattle are on edge after three women were attacked in less than 48 hours. The new effort to protect people living nearby. So if you guys ever see a post-it on your package, it's me. And it literally says, have a great day. It really does. Oh, and a huge gift for a local Amazon delivery driver. Coming up on Cairo 7 News at 7, why she was given that check for $10,000. The 60-inch base at Snoqualmie Pass, that's the lowest base up there at the summit. Doesn't tell the whole tale because up at Alpental and even high above I-90, we got a lot more snow this week. I'm pinpointing when snow comes back to the Cascades next. It's on us. Watch Cairo 7 News in the morning around 6 a.m. and watch for me to give the code word. Then log on to Cairo7.com slash groceries and enter for your chance to win a $300 grocery gift card every weekday. It's a three-hour wait to get through three hours. I mean, it's ridiculous. I think we've outgrown this airport. Didi Sun takes a closer look at SEA's overhaul plan and if it's enough to change your airport experience. Monday at 5.30 on Cairo 7 News. Tough loss. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. Grabbing McDonald's after the game? McDonald's? Is a tradition <laughs> worth keeping? <laughs> Nothing beats buying one juicy favorite and getting a second juicy favorite for a buck. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. towards bonus free play this February at Tulalip Resort Casino. Fly on by Wednesdays to grab up to a hundred bucks in bonus free play each week. Find all the details online at TulalipCasino.com. Great party, Carly. You must have blown your budget. Not exactly. You have great name brand snacks, tons of meat, and where did you get this imported cheese? Hello, Grocery Outlet Bargain Market. Looking for some great snacks during the big game? Grocery Outlet has got you covered. This week we have 30 ounce bags of blue diamond almonds for $9.99. That's a savings worth celebrating. Grocery Outlet Bargain Market. With the Freestyle Libre 2 system, know your glucose level and where it's headed. No finger sticks needed. Manage your diabetes with more confidence. Freestyle Libre 2. Try it for free at freestylelibre.us. Would you look at that? It's beautiful. Wow. That's our boy. So bright. There's no better morning than a buy one, get one for a dollar morning at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm Dee Dee Sun at the live desk. Some breaking news out of Federal Way where a bomb disposal unit responded to a neighborhood. You can see a man suited up right there. And this was in response to a suspicious package call in the middle of a neighborhood. It happened near the intersection of Southwest 332nd Place and 39th Avenue Southwest. A block watch captain there says last night she confronted a man who she believed was prowling. And later that night, a black garbage container was left on her sidewalk. Surveillance video shows a member of the bomb squad approaching that garbage can. They then detonated a charge, sending that container into the middle of the road. Police say there were no explosives found in that container, but the woman who lived there told us it was filled with live ammunition and batteries. We don't know if the person who left the device was caught, but we will continue to track this unusual situation and update you on air and online. For now at the Live Desk, I'm Dee Dee Sun.
Tonight, people in Seattle are on edge following a series of assaults targeting women. Just this past week, there were three attacks in a span of less than 48 hours. And so far, two suspects have been arrested. But as Kyra 7's Jake Chapman reports now, despite those arrests, people in that area are still worried. And right here on East Howe Street, where one of the most recent attacks happened, we've seen people place signs like this here and right over there, warning them about the potential dangers that can happen here. And not only are people who use these steps daily concerned, those who live right by are also on edge. I mean, it concerns me. Definitely security alarm was on, everything. Magic and his family live right by these steps on East Howe Street. And almost a week ago, tells us he heard a woman attacked. And then we heard a lady scream, then brought it up, and then we saw the police arrive. He even claims to have spoken with the victim right after it all happened. And then we walked outside, and we talked to the lady after she had already talked to the police for like 45 minutes. And she had like, I mean, you could see her whole face was bruised. Seattle police say three women were attacked in a span of 48 hours in the city. One woman here on East Howe Street, another at a store in the Green Lake neighborhood, and one woman at a South Lake Union apartment where a man broke into her home, held her at knife point, and raped her. And after attacks like these, Magic says his family's sense of security has been impacted. Yeah, well, I mean, my partner wasn't going to do the stairs anymore. We were like, done, we're not going to do the stairs. And I've always felt like safe because of the stairs right next to our house because so many people are by him it's you know gives you an illusion of safety he says after the most recent attack these signs you see warning of a predator were put on display as a warning to those using these stairs and while people like elizabeth craddock who uses these stairs weekly is thankful for the effort i think that that's nice i do she tells us she still is wary about coming alone and what time of day she shows up um, I think it's always good to have uh, be aware of your whereabouts at all times if you're alone and exercising. I think that's important. Because many see the past week of attacks as a reminder to always have your guard up everywhere. Thank God they caught him, but like more, there's nothing like, like it was just so brazen. Like middle like morning, I mean these stairs are busy. And people off camera tell us the past week has been triggering for them, especially since all of the victims in these attacks are women. But some people tell us who use these stairs on a daily basis, it's not a bad idea to have someone with you, especially at night, because you never know who is watching you. We're in Seattle. Jake Chapman, Cairo 7 News. Today, the FBI conducted a search of former Vice President Mike Pence's Indiana home and found another classified document. Pence advisor Devin O'Malley tells CBS News that the DOJ conducted a thorough and unrestricted search for five hours. They removed one document with classified markings and six additional pages without such markings. In January, attorneys located what was said to be a small number of classified documents at Pence's home. According to sources, the FBI is also expected to search Pence's Pence's office in Washington, D.C. in the coming days. Well, new at 7, Amazon awarded a local mother a $10,000 check for her customer service. This is a cool story. Yeah. Debbie Grace Caballa was given a matching check this afternoon to give to Highline Schools Foundation. This is all possible through Alexa feature, an Alexa feature in December called Alexa Thank My Driver. It was launched for customers to have the chance to thank their delivery driver, and Caballa was the top thank driver in the Puget Sound region. I'm overwhelmed with happiness. I can't, I can't be any more happier because I'm here with my kids. We're all separated right now. And yeah, so I'm just happy that we're together. Oh, Amazon says the program ended on December the 24th, but the company says you can still thank your delivery driver using Alexa, and they will share your appreciation with them. Oh, that's so great. A little bit of sunshine in a couple of ways. Sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and we're going to have even more sunshine tomorrow. Once we get into Sunday, a little less of that, but uh, we've had some nice days out there. Wow. This was the end of the day. This isn't live. This was uh, a little before 6 p.m. in Dianola, Kitsap County. Of course, the sun's down now, so we like to see some of those great sunset videos and oh one of my favorite places the Kirkland waterfront just really nice out there once those clouds cleared out really the entire nice uh, entire day was nice tomorrow will be too temperatures today getting a little above average 50 is average for Seattle and also in Tacoma 
Uh, and we've had some mild weather recently. That changes early next week. And that's in the pinpoint seven day forecast in a few moments. But back in the five o'clock newscast, I had some areas of showers, uh, uh, sprinkles across Kitsap County. As expected, those have faded away. There's still a slim chance of a few raindrops out there later this evening. By midnight tonight, it's done. And the leading edge of this cloud cover is still about 450 miles, 437 miles away from the coast. But most of that energy is heading towards southeastern Alaska. It'll take until late Sunday and Monday for that to start to slide down from southeast Alaska our way. So for tomorrow, out for a bike ride, morning clouds, some afternoon sunshine. It looks very nice. Bundle up early and the kids bundled up. The dog bundled up if they need it. 37 in Everett, 36 in Bellingham starting your Saturday morning. High temperatures so a little cooler than average by a couple of degrees. So that's a little change, but the real cold air is not going to be here yet. Really not until we get into Monday. Pinpoint future track. 11 tonight still has a sprinkle or two, but most of the rain is done. Early tomorrow morning, though, we'll have some low clouds and some fog, especially in low spots, river valleys, and areas of the South Sound. Tomorrow afternoon, expect more sunshine. Early on Sunday, we're going to get a little rain to come in through the strait, maybe a stray shower through the San Juans. This is 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. Some light rain showers, mainly favoring the northern half of the area on Sunday afternoon and into Sunday night. Then into Monday, Showers around, some heavier downpours at times, more mountain snow. Past travel could get troublesome as we go into Monday afternoon. And as temperatures fall, snow levels will too. On Monday afternoon, Monday evening, and especially Monday night and into early Tuesday morning, before the precipitation shuts off, there could be some wet snow. Right now, it looks like accumulations are going to be minor and spotty, if that. But we'll be watching for Valentine's Day itself. It turns sunny, but cold. All right, thanks, Morgan. We know food prices are high and we want to help. We're giving away a $300 grocery gift card every weekday. So starting Monday, watch Cairo 7, 7 News in the morning around 6 a.m. Watch for the code word and then enter for your chance to win. For official rules and more information, visit Cairo7.com slash groceries. And kickoff for Super Bowl 57 is less than 48 hours away now. Coming up next, we're breaking down the several firsts happening during this year's big game. And Boeing is hiring manufacturing and quality positions. Join Boeing. Apply now at boeing.com slash career events. Next DT Hollywood Super Bowl pre-party is on. What else is going to be in this cup besides coffee? Plus, we're with cast of Fast X for their big L.A. takeover. Next DT. Coming up next on Cairo 7. Why move into Shags to Quilla Village? Let's start with dollars and cents. Good sense and great value. Fact, average apartment rents are nearly $2,500 a month in some areas. You can live at Tequila Village for less than $1,650. Amazing amenities, stunning views. Get your second month rent-free with a one-year lease. Lock in your rate for two years with our Inflation Buster Special. Live well and within your budget at Shag. Call 888-450-SHAG. That's 888-450-7424. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a constant vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. That's right here. During the Les Schwab Founders Celebration Sale, save up to $150 instantly on select sets of four tires. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Comfort is personal. At Bassett, we build comfort into every style and give you options so it feels like it's designed for the way you live. Because it is. This President's Day, save half off beds and dining tables, 30% store-wide, and three years no interest. Oh, it's cold outside. Time to protect your vehicle from winter's wrath. Of course, the hot sun can be tough on vehicles, too. You need WeatherTech all year round. Come on, protect your investment. Laser-measured floor liners and cargo liner will shield the carpeting from sand and snow. For your interior, there's seat protector and sunshade, plus mud flaps and bump step for the exterior. Order American-made products at weathertech.com. Surf's up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, 
Look at that fire! Pemco, defender of your Northwest. Are you sure our home's gonna sell? Watch this. Selling with Redfin gets your home in front of more buyers, so you sell for more. Oh, what does this button do? Uh, I was gonna save that for your open house. Why settle for less? 800-690-1000. The news continues at 11 on Cairo 7. Earlier, we showed you this video of neighbors stepping between a man and Seattle police guns. Well, we're taking a look at the response to that call and why police are just now releasing the body cam footage. That is tonight at 11. A live look now at State Route 520 Bridge. A heads up for drivers. Eastbound traffic will be closed there between Montlake Boulevard and 92nd Avenue Northeast this weekend. Crews are pouring concrete for the new eastbound bridge. All that work is supposed to begin at 9 o'clock Saturday night. That bridge will reopen at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Well, let's go live to State Farm Stadium in Phoenix, Arizona. Less than 48 hours to kick off of Super Bowl 57. The Chiefs taking on the Eagles, and this year's big game is featuring several firsts. That includes two players going against their brothers in the Super Bowl for the first time. That's Jason and Travis Kelsey. Their mom, Donna, look at that. She had that <laughs> custom-made jersey. Now, meanwhile, that woman... At Autumn Lockwood, the Eagles assistant sports performance coach, is the first black woman to coach in the Super Bowl. And the quarterbacks are also breaking new ground. Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes will be the first black quarterbacks to go head-to-head -head in the big game. If you think about Jackie Robinson and people that broke the color barrier in, in baseball, um, I, I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for them. Well, one more first for Super Bowl 57 to celebrate 50 years of women flying in the Navy. The pregame flyover will be piloted by an all-female crew. Now, kickoff is Sunday afternoon at 3.30. Halftime is going to be girl power as well, by the way. And while the game might be happening more than 1,000 miles away in Arizona, some players in the game this year are making it feel close to home here, and that's because a pair of former local standout cornerbacks, WSU's Jalen Watson and UW's Trent McDuffie, will both be playing with the AFC's Kansas City Chiefs. Meanwhile, two other former Cougs will be serving in primary backup roles for the Philadelphia Eager Eagles, Gardner Minshew, remember him? Backup quarterback, <laughs> Andre stash. Dillard. Uh, there you go, <laughs> Uncle Rico. And Andre Dillard is currently on injured <laughs> reserve. <laughs> And that's when the, kind of the the wetter weather might be rolling in, huh? About yeah. Super Bowl time. Yeah, so. late in the afternoon on, okay. on Sunday, we'll have some rain. Doesn't look to be all that heavy. On Monday, we'll have some heavier rain showers. And through the afternoon, Monday and into Monday evening, any yeah. heavier showers could have a few <laughs> wet snowflakes mixed in. Still, it doesn't look like a big deal, but we'll be watching. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Thank you, Morgan, and thank you out there for trusting Cover 7 News. See you at 11. Cairo 7 News is live, local, in-depth, 24-7. Log on to Cairo7.com and download the Cairo 7 News and Weather apps.